Hey everyone and welcome to the monthly live stream. Um, it looks like everything is online as always. I am super nervous. <laughs> You'd thought that after doing these live streams for I think over two years, maybe three years now, <laughs> I should be completely calm, but I'm not. So anyways, I'm really happy to see you all you here already. Uh, so please say hi in the chat and uh, introduce yourself. Uh, let me see, I'm just going to switch off the sound. Sorry. So please say hi in the chat. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And today's topic is a little bit different than my normal live streams, because usually I talk about a specific sewing topic. So it's more like um, a class where we share, you know, knowledge together and give each other tips and advice and all that stuff. But uh, today I want to talk about a subject that has been on my mind a lot. Uh, I think probably more or less, I guess, during all my sewing life, which has been going on now for over 30 years, uh, which is sewing and body image, because I think this is a really interesting topic to to investigate and discuss and think about in what way can we use uh, sewing as a remedy, I think, perhaps um, when it comes to all the pressure and expectations and not to mention the fact that when when you're when we are um, only able to get ready to wear for instance it's a very cookie cutter sizing so that means that a lot of us will have to settle for clothes that doesn't really make us feel very good sometimes because they don't really fit as well as they should which all of these things kind of you know, triggers all sorts of emotions. And I think most of us, to be honest, have battled with this. I, I, to me, it's almost like a curse that we are like given at, at a young age, basically. And I'm actually going to share the story in today's live stream about, you know, how I got um, conscious about this thing and how that has affected my life and uh, how that pertains to sewing as well. So I'm really, really happy to see so many people in the chat already. Um, so I just want to say hi to you as, as see if I can follow along here. I've got my glasses on today, so hopefully it will be a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to see if I can shout out <laughs> as many as possible. Uh, hi, Kyle from New Jersey. We have Rode again from New York, Andrea from Germany. Uh, we have Kathleen from Washington state. We have Donna from New Jersey. Lots of people from uh, the U S today. Uh, Deborah from Southern California. We have Heike. Hi, hello. Helen from Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, and we have uh, another one from Pennsylvania, Jane. Hi, Jane. Um, and we have Libby from California, and uh, Chris from Sweden, I know, and we have Salome from Sir Syracuse, right, in New York. Um, Renee from Omaha, Mary from Massachusetts, I think, MA, right? And uh, Maggie from Michigan, your tutorials are very helpful and informative. Thank you so much, Maggie. Um, Kathleen from South Africa and Michelle says our bodies are perfect the clothes are wrong words of wisdom and something I love to hear your thoughts about because that's something I am totally doing agreeing on very much and uh, Jan says hello I'm joining in from Virginia excellent topic um, we have uh, Wurzetzi from South Africa Hi, I, I sorry, I felt I didn't pronounce your name right. <laughs> There's so many people in chat now. Uh, Lisa, Lisa from Cincinnati. We have Catherine. Hi, and we have Anne's fashion studio from New Brunswick in Canada. Donna from New North Carolina, maybe. Uh, Kathy from UK. And Michelle is from California. And we have Frida from Nortelje. Now you got a little bit of a Swedish, <laughs> Swedish sounding voice for me as well. I usually try to speak English sometimes with better success than others, but you know the drill. And I'm always, always happy to uh, learn a few more words here. As you know, if you watch my live streams, there's usually a few words where I'm really struggling <laughs> to pronounce, but you always come to the rescue. So it's really nice to have uh, a lot of people here, you know, giving advice on that language as well. So. Yes, today's topic is body image. And um, as I said in the initial, uh, when I addressed this just in the beginning of this live stream, is that I feel it's like a curse that is given to us um, at a very young age. Unfortunately, at least that's what I feel, how it's like uh, in Sweden, where I grow and from grew up and from where I can tell a lot of us um, around the world are, you know, getting aware of, you know, what a standard size is, so what a standard body should look like. And if we're not aware of that as a 
child would definitely wear that when we uh, end up buying our own clothes and are not struggling to find them to fit because as we all know bodies comes in all shapes and sizes and var variations and it can be really demoralizing uh, and I think we can all co-sign on that that we have been in a dressing room and felt absolutely defeated uh, trying on you know uh, pants after pants or shirt or blouse or dress and whatever and it's just like it's like we feel so alone in a way and what's beautiful about sewing is that it it empowers us in a way because we are more suddenly we actually have the power of changing that because now we can sort of move away from what you know a standard i put this in quotation marks i, I will try to you know be mindful about my wording here but uh there's you know a need from standardization in the world and um, and that really goes to grain the grain because of the way we really look like so uh for me and my journey with this is that uh when i was a kid um i think it's hard to say exactly when i became like a wearer but i do have a very pivotal moment is because uh when i was a kid i was uh, roundish <laughs> so to speak and what happened was when i think i was about 10 or 11 you know i think um i think it's probably quite common that in schools you ha you go into weigh-ins where you measure and see that you are growing at the expected um speed which of course i didn't either <laughs> because i stopped growing very early i was always very short uh and secondly they also weigh you and what happened after one of those weigh-ins when i was about 10 or 11 uh i was classified as being overweight so what happened then was that I had to regularly go, uh, this is why I feel depressed about talking about this. I, I have no idea what's the best way of doing this, but uh, to me that didn't feel very good. It, I felt very singled out. That I was kind of deviating from that curve, you know, where you you uh, had in your, like the school nurse had, where you, you put all your measurements and your, you know, length and your weight. So, uh, so basically I had to go to regular weigh-ins I, I cannot remember if there was also advice regarding exercise and food habits. I'm sure it was, but but the only thing that um, was, uh, you know, burned into my memory was the fact that uh, I had to put, you know, have excuses because I had to go to the nurse regularly and I couldn't tell my classmates that I had to go there uh, because I was uh, overweight and, you know, they wanted to keep track of me. Um, so that was like the... Of course, of other things as well, and I think I was aware of it before that, but that kind of put a number to it. Um, and around that same time, I also actually began sewing uh, because I, I really struggled finding clothes to fit because uh, standard children sizing, as, as I, I was so short, I wasn't able to wear up grown up sizing uh, and I was too like curvy to wear, uh, I also developed quite early, so I was too curvy to uh, fit into children's clothes because I couldn't, um, uh, I was, you know, around the hips and the, the tummy area and all that stuff. So, uh, so that's also, uh, I, I developed an interest in sewing around that time as well. So I began making my own pants using very soft cotton and also uh, putting elastic, like elastic casing in the waist. So that was, apart from the fact that I was able to express my um, creativity for the first time, I was also able to uh, wear something that was comfortable and didn't feel too tight and didn't feel uncomfortable uh, when I sat down. So just that little, little thing actually uh, made me more proud about myself and my body and the way I look because I wasn't, I was no longer confined to the fact that I had to go in this really uh, humiliating situation uh, in the dressing room uh, trying to fit because I couldn't fit children's clothes and I couldn't fit uh, older clothes. So uh, that's like my my beginning of both these two things. They're actually quite parallel. I realized that today when I was thinking about um, what I should talk about today is that my sewing journey and my body image journey is very aligned with each other. Uh, so that's like my backstory and I'm, I'm sure s s many of you have had similar experience like an um, awakening where you, you realize that your body doesn't fit the norm, uh, so to speak. Um, so yeah, that was really, really um, uh, tough, uh, that period for me. 
uh, later on, uh, when I was a bit older, you know, late teens, I, um, I became more physically active and I also became a vegetarian. So, um, I did lose some weight. So, uh, I, I guess I started to fit in a little bit more into the norm again, horrible quotation mark here, but, uh, I still wasn't never able to, for instance, uh, because I am quite round around my tummy area and quite curvy, I was never able to, to, um, uh, even even when I was my skinniest, I was never able to um, button up uh, pants because they were always too uh, tight around the waist. Um, so I I started you know quite early. I think I was I gravi um, I graduated from sewing trousers with elastic waist to sewing trousers with a zipper fly and waistband when I was I think about fourteen or fifteen. So pants has always been like my nemesis when it comes to ready to wear because I've never really been able to. F fit i mean it, was, it became easier when when they started using lycra fabric but before that i was almost e never ever able to find anything that you know fit my body so um it felt really empowering to have that um you know understanding of how to alter your clothes and you know the pattern adjustments and i think one of the beautiful things about sewing is that it's um it kind of removes the stigma of sizing in a way because the especially if you start, you know, venturing more into adjusting your pattern or even drafting your pattern yourself, you're just, ref it's just a reflection of your specific body. That's what you're drafting for. You're not trying to fit into something. Instead, you're, you're creating clothes for you instead of feeling sometimes obviously a pressure that a lot of us feel that we need to have a body that fits into the clothes. So, uh, that's like my backstory with this and it's definitely something I've been thinking I've, I've say almost in time of life I, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit in a situation like this again now because I'm you know I'm turning 15 two years and I'm I'm starting to head into menopause so I had this uh, uh, you know my body's changing again and um, I did I was so I made a couple of jeans about one or two years ago using my basic uh, jeans pattern uh and i didn't measure it <laughs> so and I, I it's it's in a video that i talk about this as well uh where i i just sew in you know like I normally do and i realized uh, that i uh, they were too tight around the, the waist the tummy area <laughs> so uh i i felt a little bit sad about that because i put so much time into making the jeans and you know how, how time consuming it is to make jeans uh so that really bogged me down <laughs> a little bit uh but then i was like i if i hadn't been able to sew that would have put me you know i was mostly of course i was a little bit you know it's always hard when things are changing but i think uh it was mostly because i put so much effort into making jeans that i couldn't quite fit right but obviously um the realization was that yeah but then i just have to change my jeans basic pattern so that's what i'm done now and I'm actually sewing a pair now that I'm also using to demonstrate different techniques for my book, upcoming book about sewing jeans is, you know, so I changed everything now. It has a wide, it's much wider along um, the waist and I'm just trying to find a good waistband now that will fit nice and, you know, I can sit down without feeling anything hugging in. Um, but yeah, it's like a constant journey. But then again, I, I was remembering how, um, how I was, um, how I have this power that even though my body is obviously changing and you know weight fluctuates up and down or you know we all have a unique body shapes and it doesn't really matter of course it's a bummer that I can't wear everything I've made but it's not that bad because I'm also able to use my skills and just do something that fits me in my current state of uh, what my body is and looks like. So that was a long backstory, but I would really like to hear if you are comfortable sharing about your thoughts about this and um, how have sewing has helped you when it comes to your body image and uh, how you feel that it relates to you. So I would really like to hear your stories and your experience about this as well, because it's definitely, I think, a topic that you know affects us all in, in one way or another, uh, definitely. I, I wish we didn't, but, but it does. Um, so yes, lots and lots of, uh, lots and lots of comment here. Uh, Jan says bathing suits are the worst. Yes, I couldn't. Yeah, they are definitely on their pants for me as well. So again, great that we're able to sew those. Um, and Chris says anything skin tight or maybe it should be rephrased to lay close to the body. 
Uh, Renee says, I was also tall, bean pole, and nothing fit. Yes, again, you know, the mold that we have to fit in is <laughs> very limited. So it just anything that goes in any type of direction from that, it's very, very hard to fit into. And the Serial Hobby says, I haven't bought clothes in years, but I still get similarly frustrated with sewing pattern because no one draws from my body shape apple. Uh, and plus size people often feel the same body shape aside. Yes, for sure. Um, and also, so Sarah continues there. So while knowing how to make adjustments, liberating sewing commercials pattern can screw up with your body image too, just in a different way. I very much agree with this point of view. And I've actually done a video, which is linked in the description section, where I talk about the um, size chart and how that relates and how that also can uh, affect the, how uh, we perceive the image uh, or a body. And um, obviously they use, uh, again, they fall into the trap uh, of, you know, drafting for a standard size because that's probably the common de denominator. Uh, I think that what I talk about in that video and I think it's really powerful is that I feel that the in the sewing community has contributed a lot to more diversity in this. I like that um, some pattern companies are actually very upfront that they draft for a particular um, body type. So for instance, there are pattern companies that draft for a fuller bust. Uh, there are pattern companies that drafted for a little bit shorter people. Uh, those that are, you know, defined as peer shaped. I know speaking of Apple, I think um, Cashmerette um, drafts for an Apple type, which is more like where you round tummy, which is uh, definitely my body type as well, I would say. Um, so yeah, there are more options. And also I think, uh, also I think they, the indie pattern companies has definitely led the way uh, when it comes to diversity, also modeling the patterns. I, I, I still, of course, we have ways to go, but if you compare it to how it was maybe like even 15 years ago, it's still a lot more diverse. Um, I don't know how it is in the menswear side, I suspect because the menswear is still less, there's less diversity in the menswear space, also because the market is still small. I can imagine that when it comes to menswear, it hasn't yet done that journey that I think that women's wear are slowly but surely definitely um, walking towards when it comes to sewing pattern. But uh, when I do research, when I check men's wear and men's wear pattern, I definitely feel that I don't see that type of diversity thinking still. Uh, I could be wrong because I definitely don't know all the companies, but I, I still feel that uh, we have ways to go for sure. So yeah. And uh, Arlena says, oh, you're not alone. When I came to the US from Trinidad and Tobago, I began to develop and gain weight from puberty and I've been fluffy ever since hard you. Yes. Uh, and Siri Hobby says, I'm also short, five, uh, five foot one and chubby, which doesn't help. Yeah, that's definitely a combination that's tricky because obviously when, uh, when we are short, we're also uh, supposed to be very small, like fine limbed. So because usually they add more ease to, um, when they add more ease, they also add more length in, in the standard sizing. So that's also an issue. Uh, and also op opposite, if you're uh, very tall, but you know, not roundish, then it will perhaps also be hard to find clothes because I, I know that's very common for menswear, for instance, that they assume just because you're tall, you're also wider. So again, it's, it's hard. It's really, really hard. And of course, everyone will never be able to sew. That's like, you know, no, not everyone will have interest to sew, but it's definitely, it's definitely a challenge, I think, for, for, you know, to be honest, the majority. So even though they try to like look for the common denominator, it's still like they miss the target almost all the time. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and uh, Rhoda says, I'm average height for a woman, five foot three, but my torso is very short and with a large bust, so it's almost impossible to find woven tops that fit. My arm size is also high, which means I'm technically a petite. Yes, it's definitely, definitely a struggle because there, there's like a preconceived idea. As I said, you know, if you have like, if you're short, then you're supposed to be flat chested like a child, <laughs> you know? So there is so many ways that, um, it messes with us, you know, because it's it's like it's very, very hard to fit in that very, very narrow. Mode. So I'm really grateful for all of you sharing your experience here. And uh, um, 
Libby says, a compelling story, Jenna, thank you so much. There was a couple of people also complimenting me on my braids. I thought I should do something different because I'm not very good with hairstyles, but I thought, you know, I should definitely try something different for once. So, and I do like to wear braids. So, yeah, but I think it's the first first time in the video, probably. Um, she says, I don't like stretchy jeans material. I love uh, Lewis, Lee Weiss, I sorry. I do, lo do like the lower cut, but I hate bending over and losing my pants. Yes, overalls for me a lot. Yes, I, I'm, I, it's the same way. They keep riding down. So, uh, and Lisa says, I like yoga waistband for my menopause waist size. Yes, definitely. That's really, really good. I'm actually now uh, also thinking about starting to add um, elastic. Uh, at the back piece of my pants and skirts. Uh, I actually have a, a skirt from Boda Style, uh, that a pattern that was designed by Karl Lagerfeld, or his design studio anyways, which is a super hip, super cool, and really, really cool uh, constructed skirt. I've never ever seen anything like that. And that ha has a, a elastic in the back part. So I'm definitely now um, going to moving forward. I'm definitely going to add that detail to more um, garments just so I don't really have to, you know, feel like I don't fit into everything every day. So, you know, just like uh, Lisa says here, you know, finding some like elastic waistband, you know, for anything like that, where we're also again able to control that because we have the sewing skills. Uh, and we more people said so just want to say hi to everyone as well. Uh, I, try, I try to keep up with everything and I'm really happy to see so many of you joining for this uh, uh, chat because it's it's really such a it's such an important topic and I, I know it's it's definitely being addressed in the sewing community which I think is wonderful but I definitely feel we could talk about it even more uh, because I, I feel that a lot of us are still you know on this journey and you know not always feeling great about it. Um, so Arlena says, my mom used to sew clothes so they would fit well, even my prom dress, and it was so admired. Yes, that's so wonderful. That's really, really empowering to hear. And, and Libby says, it's been so long I was in a dressing room. Thank goodness. But using patterns can really throw it up in your face how abnormal I am compared to pattern stance. Yes, yes, it's definitely true. I mean, you do. You guys bring up a really good point. So even though, as I said, sewing can be empowering, it's definitely also, again, a cookie cutter approach. So... Um, yeah, you will have a lot of disappointments. And one thing that annoys me, uh, if I'm going to go on a rant here, because as I talk about in my videos about sizing system, I can I can live with the fact that, you know, n one company cannot serve all. But sometimes I feel that some uh, patent companies are inconsistent when they're sizing, uh, which makes it extremely hard because when you think that you actually can trust, then when you start do another pattern, it's like it totally throws you off the curve. And that can really also mess with your head and it's also like a waste of you know time and fabric so i definitely wish that uh patent companies kept a rather standardized block that they uh, base their uh, drafts on uh i i don't know if that's like a, a, a naive dream <laughs> but i wish it was that way and they were very upfront about this is the body type that we are drafting for so we wouldn't have to be so um disappointed perhaps sometimes and been thrown off like you describe here with your experience sometimes with a sewing pattern as well and um uh, michelle says uh, we're so lucky to live in this time of youtube sh sharing in the pattern companies are stepping up i 100 percent agree i definitely think they're leading the way and i think the big the big companies uh are actually following now and for sure um, and yes, yeah, speaking of cashmere, yes, uh, the series, uh, so it says, uh, hobby, sorry, cashmere drops for plus size apple, which is fine, but definitely still limited. Yes, of course, the sizing starts uh, at a higher number. So again, it's definitely not for everyone. And um, Tina Max says, I joined late. It took years for me to be able to sew for myself because I had trouble fitting myself. My weight has changed between products. So yes, that's also really, um, that can also throw you off because a body is not a static thing, right? It changes, it changes, you know, from month to month at some instances and year to year age plays a huge role right um so even though we find like as i talked about earlier you know you find your best great fitting jeans pattern that doesn't mean that it will be great fitting forever um uh 
And uh, Libby says, after I make all my adjustments, I often trace off a new pattern piece, so I'm not reminded throughout the sewing process what a Frankenstein it can make me feel like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's really that's really compelling to hear, Libby. And I definitely feel like um, we have to piece together, you know, that's basically what we're doing, basically. We're piecing together and, you know, drafting for us, you know, and making it for us. And that's so important to think about that, that this is like the patterns is we are not supposed to fit the pattern the pattern is just a journey that we can sort of create and for ourselves rather than trying and being frustrated about the fact that you know the pattern is a very far off fit even though we've done some adjustments for sure um yeah says shopping is frustrating for me everything is too big or too long i rarely buy jeans because i always swim in them yes I, I totally feel you. Helen says, I was a very skinny kid. I was trying on bathing suits at uh, age 15. And the saleswomen had me to try on a fully padded suit. Wow, not just padded. But, I mean, again, that goes to show how ingrained those standards are in our society. When you share the story, Helen, like, yeah, this is not what you are supposed to look like. So now we're going to fix this with some artificial padding and, you know, I mean, that messes with your brain, especially if you're a vulnerable, te uh, vulnerable teenager and you haven't built the the internal strength, right? And some of us struggle with this still. Because uh, that's also, uh, which you know brings me back to my initial story there when I was like singled out as being overweight. That kind of go lives with you forever in a way. So it's re really, really hard to to get away from. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I will say, I do think as a society, we've done some progress. Uh, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s and I will say that the understanding of the, the psychological understanding of how we speak about our bodies that was very limited I would say uh, would you agree with me if you're like um, older or maybe it's the same today I don't know I mean now of course we have we are even more bombarded uh, with images and now it's also easier to um, uh, doctor images, uh, is that doctor images? But is that we say when you can use apps? For instance, if you are an influencer, you can use apps uh, to change your body. Uh, so again, I think teenagers will have another type of idea. Uh, of course, plastic surgery has been, um, you know, uh, present for very long, but now you can do a lot of alterations just in, in the you know the app. And that again, I, I can imagine that sets a standard that young people today will be affected about. So maybe it's not bad. I will say though, uh, I would really like to hear your perspective because I, you, we have people here from many different countries. What has happened in Sweden for the last few years of going to back to ready to wear is that, for instance, underwear um, uh, for real. Um, and Anna Nicole Smith used to be. Uh, every H&M, which is a large uh, retailer in Sweden, uh, and I think it's a pretty global presence, they ha used to have underwear every um, commercials, you know, like billboards uh, every around Christmas. And uh, so they used to have really famous celebrities such as Anna, Anna Nicole Smith and lots of like, you know, very popular models. Um, and definitely, you know, uh, a certain type of women. Uh, but now, a lot of the high street brands are actually showing a diversity. Uh, I think it's a little bit like the, that dough commercial, if I should speak in more global terms, but uh, so they don't do as much retouching anymore. They also show women that definitely has, you know, layers uh, around the tummy. Um, of course, it's still airbrushed and stuff, so it's not like it's 100%, but it definitely shows more diversity today. If you uh, pass the billboard uh, doing like commercials for a uh, bathing suit, uh, there's still, of course, a very um, small standard, but I've seen more and more deviations uh, using in the commercials now, at least. So we're taking baby steps, perhaps, but not, not big steps enough for sure. Um, and Janine says, I find it, find that my entire adult life, I've always been wearing the same size, but my shape has changed and continues to change. 
um, which makes things very complicated sometimes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we are living things, right? And our body is definitely very living as well. So just like hair or nails and they, they grow and shrink in different areas. So I guess we should embrace that. But it can be really frustrating when you have your clothes that you like and you want to wear. Um, Chris says, I hate being a pessimist, but probably won't happen because of the stigma of sewing men. Uh, yes, going back to my um, uh, discussion about why I don't see the same type of diversity around male patterns as I've seen in, in the sewing patterns catering for women. I I hope that you are wrong in a way, Chris, because I, uh, I think that maybe we are, um, it's just, um, we're like in the starting blocks, right? Because it's just like gender inclusive is such a long journey because for for centuries we have been so ingrained just like with body types we've been so ingrained with one perspective uh and to change that it takes so long and it's so frustrating and so annoying and it just shouldn't be like that but i think that we are taking baby steps it's just that it doesn't happen soon enough and that really ruins it for you know for a lot of us for sure um and uh, Michelle says, we're lucky to live in a time of internet sharing. I do believe that independent companies are stepping up 100% agree. Um, and Sarah Hobby says, I feel very lucky that I live in New York. So I decided to do a patent cert certificate at FIT so I can do it for myself. That's a really, really good idea. I think that also, in a way, I mean, not everyone will enjoy patent making. It's definitely um, a technique. I mean, it's a skill that you have to develop. And uh, I've done several videos about that and, uh, and about how how time consuming and difficult it can be to learn pattern making and uh, taking courses and stuff. Uh, so it's definitely, but that kind of removes all the sizing. Now you don't, cause that's always, it's only based on you, right? The starting point is you, which is the great thing about, you know, mastering pattern making, if that's something, an avenue that you want to go along, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and Christina says, sewing has been very freeing for me, learning that it's pattern that needs changing and not by body. Yes, co-sign 100%. I think everyone in the chat is completely agree with you here, Christina. Uh, MD says, hi, Marianne here. I've noticed that more high-end department stores are using average female bodies to show the online catalog. They do not show the heads, however. Very weird. Yes, I've seen that trend too. I've seen that a lot in a lot of onlines. They are cutting the heads. And I, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. But yeah, I've seen that too. I've seen it overall, you know, regardless of body shape. Um, Paul Smith says that I find the biggest problem with men's pattern is the lack of them. And then trying to find something you like make it even more difficult. Yes, it's definitely, definitely still very, very limited. And um, but Paul says I'm a standard commercial shape, which helps a little. Uh, Donna Metz says yes to all of the above. I'm currently returning to sewing garments for myself. I have learned to make muslins and through many online tutorials, learning to drape and adjust. Yes, very, very important. Uh, Libby says I also do feel better when I draft my own pants of my sloper. Now that is empowering because I'm not being compared to anything real or imagined. A hundred percent, hundred percent agree. Uh, and we have Chris, Kristen's Jacob says I'm inverted triangle. I'm short, full busted. And I'm thick in the front and back. Not the easiest figure for buying clothes and even a challenge to sew clothes. I, I totally understand that. And again, I, that when, when, you know, when your body type deviates too much from that tiny mold that we talked about that you have to fit in, I definitely think it can be really empowering to just like um, venturing into pattern making or at least make use your um, some pattern, like pre-made pattern. But uh, as Libby talked about earlier, you know, piece everything together and do all the alteration and then create like um, templates or basic blocks or slopers um, that you have that you can base um, your next project on. Of course, different fabric choices will, uh, of course, influence the fit. For instance, uh, if you draft a pair of pants, you know, you might have to have a pants that is uh, for, um, you know, more, if you want to have something that's more fitting, you obviously have to do like draft it may maybe for something like with lycra in it. And if you want to have straight leg, of course, it's a different story, like a hundred percent woven fabric and such and such, but, or drapey linen fabric, but still, uh, definitely. I think that's a goal to have if you're really struggling is to, to just get your key pieces like, um, traced on firmer paper. I do that. And I've actually done a video about that as well. If you want to check that out, 
where I show how I do that, uh, just tracing on very inexpensive craft paper. It's it's very simple. It's you don't really have to know the Orchard video, but just to give you a for, few more tips that there. But um, I do that a lot when I have done all my adjustments and I really like a fit of something. I try to always um, convert it to firmer paper, and that will be my template for any style that I do uh, using a similar fabric type. Uh, Oh, we have so many. I just want to say I'm so I'm I just want to say I'm so touched and I'm so grateful for all of you sharing your experience. And I feel like you know just having this conversation can you know I which I talked about in another video as well. I feel that like when we address things, it's like we lift a kind of a heavy lid uh, that we're living under. I think we all have those heavy lids, especially in times like these. I mean, we are this live stream is done in the um, the spring of 2020 with the global pandemic and we have so many things that we have to deal with but you know just addressing how we feel about whatever issue that we are facing i think it's a very powerful thing so i'm very very happy that you're you're willing to share your experience with me and everyone is watching uh it's getting a little bit dark here i'm seeing if i can fix the camera um I, I thought I was, you know, uh, I thought I was going to experience the Swedish summer here, right? So I was able to actually have enough light for the entire, enough natural light. But yeah, that didn't happen. Okay, hopefully you can see me a little bit better now. Um, yeah. Um, so let me see here. Uh, and MD says, children need to be nourished in a healthy way. I do not support any fat except the movements or weight only could be help balance down the line. I definitely think that shaming is is a very um, it's a delicate thing, and I definitely think that there are more positive ways of dealing with your body uh, with different health concerns. But I think that feeling inadequate and the way it is addressed in our society, as I shared in my beginning experience, uh, which I as I was one of those people, uh, I definitely think there can be encouraging and nourishing and accepting ways and that we have to have a wider acceptance of these issues because i feel that the mental toll that that puts on us is absolutely devastating as well so i definitely think one has to be extremely extremely careful when we are talking about that so i, I just want to say that and i know this is a topic that um there are many different viewpoints in but for me uh as someone who has struggled a lot with body image and I've also fluctuated in weight uh, as a grown up, um, it just messes with your head. It's a very, very heavy cross to bear. So if, you, if we are going to address it in a positive way, we have to be extremely delicate. And to be honest, I don't feel that we as a society has uh, succeeded with that at all. Uh, so. I, I don't have all the answers, but I definitely think that we have to be very, very careful with the wording and being um, understanding because, yeah, it definitely can, it can ruin, ru it can literally ruin people's life, um, the way, the value that we put on our bodies. So, yeah, I just want to say that. And I know it's a tricky topic to, to navigate and I'm definitely mindful of, uh, of all the complexities in it, but I just want to say that uh, regarding your comment there. Um, uh, Jane says, has any one of you tried the sure fit design system? I find that it helps with sizing uh, to your body shape. I'd love to hear that as well. And also, again, if you have any great resources, I'd love to hear that because I, I, because I'm so busy right now with my day job and, you know, all the, um, the content I create and my upcoming book, uh, I don't feel like I am really attuned with all the great things is going on in the sewing community. So if you have any resources or like you had um, Jane of the Surefit Design System or blog posts or other videos by other people that you find really helpful, uh, please share because that's also really, really valuable. So we can keep on, you know, thinking about this topic. Um, and Donna says, it is difficult to let go of the things that you were put in your head when you were young. I'm so lucky that my grandmother gave me the gift of sewing. Um, Yes, I agreed. Um, and Sherry says, did I miss it? Did you say what pattern you like to use? Uh, if you ask me, Sherry, or maybe I, I, sorry, but yes, for me, 
Um, I, I would say I draft about 50% of the patterns myself and uh, the rest is almost exclusively uh, from Birder Style magazine because they are quite consistent with their um, block. So that means that, of course, now, as I said, because I'm heading into menopause, my body's changing again. So I will definitely have to do more alterations now. But uh, those, so yes, so it's really hard for me because when I, I venture outside that very limited pool of patterns, I have to do so many alterations that it's my body, especially because I'm short and I like to have a little bit, you know, uh, because sometimes I feel if the garment is too oversized, I almost feel like I'm drowning a little bit in all the... So uh, I feel like having something in the middle, which means that I'm very dependent on having patterns that really fit me well, because otherwise uh, it's better on my body. So that's why I'm so limited. Uh, so if you follow, you follow me for a while, you can see that I don't really uh, go... Uh, I'm very adventurous <laughs> with my sewing pattern. Um, yeah. Okay, now I think, um, let me see here, um, let me see here, scrolling through the Facebook, Beth says, um, Beth says, scrolling through Facebook page and seeing some, super, I think we have some lagging issues here, maybe it's just my computer, but, uh, uh, yeah, we'll see if we have some, I'm going to scroll down the chat now. Um, benefit of just having some basic pattern making skills so if you want to invest in yourself and your your life <laughs> perhaps taking pattern making class is a good idea um Elibis says i really appreciate the uh, camaraderie here since we don't talk about it openly or often body image struggles can be a lonely journey this is so helpful i very much agree with you Libby. I'm so I'm, I'm so touched to hear all your stories and that we are definitely we we are every type of body type represented here in this chat i'm sure and there of course there are lots of others as well but uh but we all share this experience right wonderful to talk about um and also someone asked about dresses yes i would definitely say dresses are easy to fit fitted in the waist so then they can actually be more difficult but when the dresses are more a-line which i more move towards myself it's easier to fit obviously they're more for you know um i shouldn't wear the, we used to word forgiving but it's more um flexible uh for our bodies are changing and we also have um uh another fun was tried sure fit design i've tried sure fit design that jane talked about it's very helpful it's encouraged you to find time to check it out it does offer a lot of solutions to achieving flat rate looks etc i should also i have this um a book uh from um uh, fit for real people um i will say of course speaking of inclusivity it's definitely female oriented but apart from that it's a very um inclusive book which I has found immensely, immensely helpful, and it does have a fantastic range of bodies uh, and showing. And it doesn't, I like it, it doesn't like put um, the wording is, I think it's really good here because it just, it's just a thing, you know. You have, it's not like you have, you, you, I like that the focus isn't always about flattery, it's just making something that fits you nice and fits you comfortable. So they're all, I, this is actually the only like proper. Um, like full on uh, pattern um, uh, fit guide that I own, but I know there are other, a couple of pop other popular ones. I The name escapes me right now, uh, but I know they're also really good, but this is definitely a book I can highly recommend. It has been um, revised, completely changed, I think. So I really like to know if you have experience with the newer version. I actually interviewed Patty Palmer, which is one of the uh, creator of the book on my blog about two years ago, one and a half years ago, when she talked about the changes from the new and old book and, you know, about, you know, her philosophy around fitting. So yeah, it's a very, very helpful book and it's helped me and I know a lot of other sewists um, a lot. Um, yeah, there are some technical problems for sure. So we're going to see now if you can, um, uh, Uh, 
Um, I got some comment now because the, yeah, it seems like I'm, I'm back again now. So I don't know the type. <laughs> I was like, type, type, type. Yes. Um, yes, there are some connectivity issues because live, uh, that's what happens sometimes. I've been really blessed now that it's been going all right. But today, uh, there are definitely some issues with the, um, the streaming. Um, also, uh, Jan says, I love all the Palmer books. Same, I also have the pants fitting book, which is also really helpful. That's also like 50% pants fitting and 50% sewing book, both excellent content. Um, yes, so not everyone is having the problems with the, um, the technical stuff. It's Chris said, it's maybe it's Sweden. So yeah, um, and Dale says, has anyone tried the Nancy Seaman fitting system? I have not, so I would really like to hear your thoughts about that. Nancy uh, was a fantastic sewing teacher and I had a lot of helps uh, from her sewing books. So I'm pretty sure that her pattern systems are very good as well. So I'd love to hear your experience with that. Um, and you says, I used to be a model and I was so used to have everything fitting perfectly. Many years and 40 pounds heavier. I have now a regular curvy size body. Not many things from the store are flattering. Yes, we feel you. and. By the way, which is something I would also, I, I have this, which I, I wrote about for the intro of this video, uh, speaking of fitting, and this has been a journey for me as well, because all is well, you know, with sewing and being able to fit and all these books are really helpful, but to me, and I, I could be, uh, I love to hear thoughts about this. I, I'm sure not everyone will agree with me, but I feel that maybe because first you don't understand fitting and then, then it's becomes like almost like um it, it kind of goes too much on the other direction instead so i feel uh that there has been over like an over emphasis of creating perfectly fitting garments so uh so once you oh, once the doors open to understanding fit it's very easy i think to get almost obsessed about that as well so and i'm not saying everyone has fallen into that trap but i have fallen into that trap where i've been almost, you know, bothered by any wrinkle, you know, if I have, I mean, this is ridiculous, but I'm sure you can relate because it's so easy to get obsessive. Like uh, you have, you know, like uh, maybe your fabric wrinkles or you do a t-shirt around the bust area. Oh, do you need to do like um, adjustments around the arm tie and, you know, full bust adjustment or things like that. And those are extremely helpful, but sometimes I feel like that can also mess with their heads. I mean, f learning and understanding fit is extremely important. And if not for anything else, but for comfort and, you know, to feel like your garment is actually uh, in line with your body. But sometimes I feel like it can get so obsessive on the other hand. So it gets too much focus on everything has to be super fitted. And I'm not sure that is healthy either. I, maybe this is not a common problem, but I have, felt felt i've fallen into this trap so to me now when it comes to my philosophy around fit i have a few key things that i always do and i'm very very specific about uh and if you want if you're short like me uh, you can watch a video that i've done about petite adjustments uh, and what i do for that and i also do some other alterations as well but i have stopped um being obsessive about any type of wrinkle because if you compare the fit of the clothes that I made myself to anything I've ever tried on in ready to wear, it's such a massive difference. So I don't really need to obsess about every wrinkle, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, that's just my thoughts about this. So I really like to hear your thoughts about that as well. If, um, if there is a balance there, maybe you have to be mindful or, or not, but yeah. Um, Uh, so yeah, we have more, um, Rory says I've used, uh, Mrs. Siemens pivot and slide method for over 12 years now. It's wonderful. That's really good to hear. And Cody says I'm somehow skeptical about system. Somehow I don't seem to fit into a proper category of drawers or have I just not find the right one? What kind of systems are there? I know I love to hear that because again, there are some systems, uh, where you can also get like, um, uh, computer drafted, uh, things, um, and there are also fitting systems. So there are lots of things. Again, as I said, I'm, I'm a little out of the loop of, of a lot of sewing stuff right now. So, but so please share in the comment section. Um, 
And um, Michelle says, I find myself watching TV shows and analyzing the fit on actors. I've done that too, and I feel like it's almost messing with my head as well. Uh, Dale says, I've just discovered her videos uh, and book on fitting, but I'm a sling recovering from a shoulder surgery. Oh, get well soon, Dale. My sewing is in hold for a few months. And Libby says, I totally relate to the compulsion to overfit, all most to the point of losing the original silhouette. I can't get in the zone in a bad way and take it to do extreme sets. You know, in a way that makes me feel better in a way, Libby, because I felt, is it just me that I have had this issue? So, yeah, it's it's so easy. Whatever we do, we are, we are humans, right? And we are have a tendency of getting obsessive about things. And I think us as is as well, right? We have already obsessed about this hobby. So I guess we have obsessive tendencies of always bettering ourselves. So I can see how it's easy to slide into that when it comes to fitting too. Uh, so thank you for sharing your experience, Libby. Um, Kirsten says, uh, I often think when I watch other women, I might have more weight, but they have to wear clothes that really don't fit, uncomfortable and not good looking. Then I'm proud of my sewing skills. Yes, I totally agree with you. Sewing, yeah, I wish everyone, in a way, I wish that everyone would be interested in sewing because I think that a lot, so many more people would benefit. I totally understand that sewing is, isn't for everyone because it's time consuming and there's a massive learning curve and you have to invest in some tools. Uh, but it's definitely extremely, extremely empowering thing in many ways. Um... And Sarah says, I'm trying to learn to sew because I'm so frustrated. I have commercial clothes, often don't fit me. I have a tiny waist and broad shoulders. I would love to unfit my own garments. Sarah, I think this is going to be a fantastic journey and it will be a lot of trial and errors. I, everyone here, uh, regardless of we've been sewing for one year or decades, we have done this exact journey. I can 100% assure you that you will get there, but it will take time. So... Um, Consult a good book or watch some YouTube videos. Uh, take a class in um, another online classes of this. I was actually that was a devastating news. Now I be speaking classes because Craftsy or my blueprint has um, NBC who owns that um, that massive craft entity is shutting down. So I have no idea what will happen with all the instructors who have done classes for them. I hope and. And pray that they will be able to somehow buy them back or get them back because that is so much knowledge that will just like get away from us so speaking about fit because i know there are a lot of classes there so i have no i haven't kept kept up with all the development around this but the news was i think it was only a few days ago right uh so i'm sure some of you perhaps know more than i do because uh, but yeah it's very devastating to hear that um but yes sarah you will get there and uh, just be patient um and you says that's right i see in the sewing community how sewers struggle with fitting adjustment that scares me we should not get overly obsessed with fitting ready to wear has little imperfection absolutely absolutely uh and ingrid says perfectionism and obsessive fitting are counterproductive excellent it's a different things yes 100 percent agree um and michelle says i try to focus on the process and learning along the way very very important and Navis, Natalia says, I realized that I like really like very little ease and being squeezed in around the torso. That's something I can only achieve by using my own stuff. Yes, if you want to get really skinny fitting uh, garments, even today with all the spandex and lycra and all those high tech fabrics, you know, it's almost impossible to, to get that fit uh, for sure. Um, and Miss Wright says, I thought I was very accepting of different body size shapes, always ensuring friends that age and size don't matter. But now I'm pregnant, I'm really struggling to like my larger body. I feel like a hypocrite. Yeah, it is. It's, it's hard, but that's why, that's because the entire society, every, every single day is telling us that we have to be a certain way. So to be strong enough to ignore that extreme extremely high pitched massive voice it's absolutely 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 impossible to be honest we all struggle with this uh, so i think it's so just like we have to be kind and accepting towards our bodies i also think that we have to be kind and accepting that we cannot always be strong and loving uh, because the whole society is against us <laughs> basically so 
I think, you know, as I, I want to like keep this as a theme of this live stream is compassion, regardless of our struggles, because yeah, it's a powerful thing that, you know, we have to deal with on a daily basis. So yeah, those voices in the head are strong. So if you start to like not feeling as confident, it's, it's totally normal and, and don't beat yourself up on it because yeah, the voice is very strong. Yeah, for sure. And, um, Rod is first speaking about blueprint. I have 48 classes on blueprint. I'm ready to sew, sue if I lose access to them. 40, yeah. Wow. I, I hope that they solve this. I did see something in the news report and that they were trying to solve how to get access to it. But yeah, they are definitely in, in for a, a very, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive mess. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, it's devastating. I feel also awful about all the, um, uh, the creators because I don't know how much of their material that they own. So even though that they, they wanted to give back, uh, the classes to the ones that purchased them, how can they do that? There are probably extremely legal tangling there. So yeah, it's terrible to hear. Uh, Donna says, yes, I'm so sad about that. I had the honor to be one of the six women chosen for the commercial in 2018. Uh, speaking of blueprint again here, I really like the format, but in the last year, many of the classes lack good content. You know, maybe they were kind of like, um, narrowing it down like in a sneaky way. Uh, and also I'm sure that to be honest, if I were, um, a sewing instructor today and already have a platform because there are so many, uh, fairly inexpensive course platforms that you can be on that I would definitely rather create my own course and host it myself if I had enough platform so I could reach enough of an audience rather than having the model. I mean, obviously the, the, um, the videos are very professionally filmed. That's sometimes hard to do, uh, when you're doing it yourself, if you don't, uh, have the finances of hiring like a full crew in a studio, but still I can pretty, I'm pretty sure that a lot of teachers were starting to get hesitant about the, the model. Um, and, oh yes, we have a hack now. Natalia is recording. Maybe I should, we should whisper this, right? Hope blueprint doesn't hear their NBC, <laughs> but apparently you can record them. So, um, so you can do a screen recording. I will not say anymore. Don't come for me NBC, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> and Donna says, amen to society being against the individual. Yes. That's, that's how society works, right? You know, you have to conform because that's like this society is the most efficient thing, right? It's an efficient monster, basically, if everyone is the same. So yeah, that's, that's a whole other discussion, but as I said, we have to be, um, we have to be kind to ourselves because it's so, so hard to be strong on, on this, this matter. <laughs> and also, uh, if you didn't hear what I whisper, apparently you can search on Reddit, <laughs> says another person. So on information on how to do this. <laughs> I feel, I feel like we're doing this rogue style now. <laughs> Sorry, it, we took a little bit off topic here, but yes, I am. I'm just going with the flow there because it's live, right? <laughs> I maybe have to trim this last bit off. So it's like, it's like when you open a letter and you have to burn <laughs> it afterwards. So I might be going to have to edit the last bit now. <laughs> so, so I don't want to get in legal trouble. <laughs> Anyways, um, yes, you know what? It's actually a one hour has passed now. So my live stream for this month is over and I will say I am so incredibly honored and happy that so many of you came here and that you shared your experience. And I know that your stories has been incredibly helpful to others, which is, as I said uh, earlier, which is one of the reasons why I talk about this topic, because I feel we have to speak about it and lift the stigma and not be ashamed that we are struggling. Sometimes, you know, we want to be powerful, confident people, you know, not bother and like body positive. I mean, that's amazing. But the reality is, as we talked about earlier, that when society is, you know, constantly telling us to be a certain way, right? It's very hard to be that strong, empowered person. But the good thing is at least it's sewing 
has given us some of the tools that we can at least say a few uh, to some of those values and actually take um, clothes in our own hands and create something that is for us. So that's definitely what I want to give like a take home message here that at least um, we have that and it's like a journey as well. You know, we discover different things and, uh, you know, it's a process of understanding our bodies and as we talk about how they change, but it's something, it's such a, such a gift. And I keep coming back to that in so many ways. I've also done a video about sewing and mental health, which I also linked to, I think, in the description section where I talk about other issues, but some of these as well that relates to how sewing can be very powerful uh, for many of the struggles that we have. So, I mean, it doesn't solve anything, everything, unfortunately, but it does can help with some things. So that's a wonderful thing. Um, uh, so we have oh so many kind thank yous here. Um, uh, thank you, thank you for the information. Thank you so much. Um, and Nilda says thank you for a really interesting discussion. Thank you, I'm really happy to have enjoyed it. Libby says thank you so much. You're, you're such a valuable leader in this community. Thank you so much, Libby. Wow. <laughs> and Donna says thank you, for so being so open with your knowledge and yourself as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I definitely try to be open. I think that's really helpful. And it also, it's helpful for me too, you know, because I struggle with this stuff as well, as I've talked a lot about in this, this live stream, it became really personal. And, but that's also why I'm so happy that also that you felt comfortable in sharing. And that's, that's such a wonderful gift to do that with each other. So, well, thank you so much. And uh, there will probably be one more live stream before the summer break. Um, I will, of course, announce it on my different platforms and on my blog and you can also sign up to my newsletter which is the link i think in the description section which i send out usually a few days before the live stream but usually it's the last sunday of each month with exceptions here and there who knows what's happening right now obviously so everything can happen but a big hug to everyone a big virtual hug and i hope that this hour was um something that gave you something and uh, was hopefully uplifting in some ways and uh, enlightening and yes so thank you so much and i talk to you soon again Bye-bye.